everyone! Welcome to another SkySiv tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at the SkySiv beam module, and I'll be walking you through how to model, analyze, and design a steel beam. Later on, I'll show you how to open up this model in Structural 3D. Let's get started. Before we start modeling, check the settings to make sure that settings are set to the desired values. This is where you can change your deflection and stress limit if you need to do so. So I'm going to select save and now we can start modeling our beam. Let's start by defining our beam length. To do this, let's navigate to the left menu under model and select beam. Today we'll be working with a 15 foot beam. Once I click add, you can see that a 15 foot beam has been added to our model and is reflected in this elements list on the right. If you would like to rotate this beam member about its own axis, navigate to the advanced features and enter in the angle of rotation. Now, let's add some supports. To do this, navigate to the left-hand menu again below model and select supports. Here, we have four support types, a pin support, a rolled support, a fixed support, and a spring support. You can enter in the support position manually, or you can quick select left, middle, and right, and the support position automatically populates with the corresponding position value. Today, I'll be designing a simply supported beam, so I want to add a pin support to the left-hand side of my beam. Once I click add, you can see that a pin support has been added to the leftmost position at zero feet. This is also reflected in our elements list on the right. Now I want to add a rolled support on the right hand end of our beam. Once I click add, you can see this is again reflected in our model and in the elements list on the right. Now let's add a section to our beam. To do this, navigate again to the left-hand menu under Model and select Section. Here, you can either manually enter in the moment of inertia and Young's modulus, or you can launch the Section Builder module integration, which is what we'll opt for today. If you would like to learn more about Section Builder and its capabilities, please take a look at our documentation and detailed walkthroughs. Today, we'll be loading in a database shape. To do this, navigate to Database Shapes in the left-hand menu. Today, I would like to design a W10 by 54 beam. I am okay with this database shape, so I will click Submit, and this section will be added to our model. You can see it reflected in the elements list on the right, and all of our section info is listed on the left. Now we can start adding loads. Before I do this though, I want to show you also how to model a hinge. To do this, navigate under Models and select Hinges. Again, you can either manually input the hinge position or quick select Middle. Once you click Add, you can see that a hinge has been added to your model at the middle position, 7.5 feet. This is also reflected in the elements list on the right. All right, now let's add a point load. So to do this, Navigate under Loads in the left-hand menu and select Point Loads. Here, we can select the direction of our point load, either down, up, or at an angle theta. Again, you can either manually input the position or quick select left, middle, right. Today, I'll be adding a load one foot, and then I will be adding this one kip magnitude load. Here, in this drop-down menu, you can select the desired load case of your point load. I'm going to select dead load. Once I click add, you can see that a one kip load in the downwards direction at the one foot position has been added to our model. And this is also reflected in the elements list on the right. A really useful feature is this repeat loads function. Here, you can enter in a number of loads at a desired interval. I'll show you an example. So I want a repeated point load in the downwards direction, starting at the middle position of my beam. The magnitude will be 0.5 kips, and these will be live loads. So I want three loads at an interval of one foot to be added to my model. So 
And you can see that three loads starting from the middle position of our model have been added at an interval of one foot apart. So now let's add our distributed loads. To do this, navigate back to the left-hand menu below loads and select distributed load. Here, you can again select either direction. If you do not want your distributed load to span the full length of your beam, manually enter in the start and end position of your load. Today, I want my distributed load to span the full length of my beam, so I will quick select the start position, zero feet, and my end position will be right, 15 feet. So now my distributed load will span the full length of my beam. The start magnitude of my distributed load is going to be three kips per feet. When I click end magnitude, the value I entered in for the start magnitude will automatically populate this field for a uniformly distributed load. If you do not want a uniformly distributed load, change this end magnitude value. This will be a live load, load case. Once I click add, you can see that my uniformly distributed load spans the full length of my beam. SkySiv also allows you to end add moments to your model. To do this, navigate under loads in the left-hand menu and select moments. Today we'll be adding a clockwise moment to the middle position of our beam. This magnitude will be a three kip feet. And this load case is going to be a wind load load case. Once I click add, you can see that this clockwise moment has been added to our model and to our elements list on the right. Okay, now would be a great time to show you how to edit or delete elements within your model. To do this, you can either select the element you wish to edit from the elements list on the right or directly from within your model. I would like to edit this moment we just added, so I'm going to select it from the elements list on the right. I actually would like it to be at a different position on my beam. so. I am going to move it to the right, and I'm going to change the magnitude to 0.5 kip feet. When I click Save, you can see that the moment has been changed in our model and in our elements list to what we want. To delete an element from your model, you can again select it from the model itself or in the elements list on the right. So I am selecting this hinge that we added earlier. To delete it, select this delete button in the left-hand menu and it will be removed from our model altogether. Okay, let's add some load combinations now. Let's navigate to the left-hand menu below loads, select load combinations. Here you can manually input your desired load combinations. You can add a row, you can delete a row. What I usually opt for is selecting this import from design code button to import load combinations from a desired design code. So here you can select your country and the design code. Once you are happy with your selection, click display. And here you can select the load combinations to perform. So I am good with all of these. I will select import now. And now I can see all of my load combinations that I just imported. This looks good. Select save. And now we are almost ready to solve. Before I solve, I want to show you how to ensure that the self-weight of your beam will be included in the analysis results. To do this, navigate up to self-weight and click this toggle to toggle on self-weight. Now we are ready to solve our model. So let's navigate up to this green solve button, select it, and now we are running our analysis. All right, here are all of our results, and our analysis results are on the right. But I want to show you how to perform a design check next. To do this, let's navigate to the design tab in this right-hand menu. We will select the design code, 
the design factors. And once you are happy with these values, click run design check. All right, here we can get our design summary report, our member one report, or we can optimize the section, which is what I'll show you next. Now navigate to this optimize tab, and here you can manipulate your optimizer set settings. I am happy to optimize with all sections in the current library. So I will select optimize section and see my results. All right, nice. Looks like this optimized section is 26% material savings and also saves us 0 0.209 kips, which is great. Our structure will be lighter now. So I would like to commit to this optimized section. And now we can see that it is reflected in the results, the W12 by 40 section. Now I'm going to show you how to open up this model in S3D. So to do this, let's navigate back to our model space. So select this model button in the top nav bar. And now we will navigate up to the top navigation bar again and select this open in S3D button. Upon selection, our model will open in SkySiv S3D, and you can see that our W12 by 40 section, along with the supports and all of the loads, have been entered into S3D, as well as all of our load combinations. From here, you can continue modeling your structure, you can continue analyzing and designing, if you would like to learn more about the capabilities and features of S3D, please take a look at our documentation and walkthroughs and examples. For now, this concludes the SkySiv Beam module tutorial. Thank you so much for your time and happy designing.